Hi everyone, welcome back to the videos. Uh, just a couple of quick things I want to say. First of all, that I've received quite a few suggestions uh, for the follow for the future videos on um, on YouTube comments and also on my email. So I'm all set probably for till the end of the summer. But please keep sending the stuff in because you never know when I run out of ideas. And also because uh, sometimes you ask questions that you know each ask a separate question but then I can probably group them together and uh, kind of combine them into a video okay so that should be good keep sending them in okay I'll need I'll need all the inspiration I can get um, one other thing a few people emailed me about maybe uh, setting up a donation account on PayPal that how that works is people who enjoy these videos will be able to send a donation to a, to a, to a PayPal account I rather not do that. I I rather keep these videos these videos um, absolutely free. I mean, they still would be, but I, I would like to have no uh, money involved with this, no attachments. So you can watch these videos if you like them, and if you don't like them, you're free to not watch them. I don't think you should be paying for this. Of course, my students, uh, of course, if you come for private classes either either in person or over the net, then of course. Um, I do charge for those, but I think these videos are little short glimpses into the guitar. You know, we all love. So I would rather keep, you know, this uh, this series of videos completely unattached to anything that has to do with money. Okay. Uh, if you, you know, I, I I answered to a couple of emails and I said that if you do want to support this, uh, you can always, if you enjoy the videos, there's a chance you will enjoy my music as well. So you're free to go to iTunes check out the, the 30 second previews they have and then if you enjoy the video you know all I ask is that you buy it instead of downloading it from the internet although I'm sure none of you have thought about downloading it illegally from the internet anyway so we should be all set okay let's let's move on today I'm gonna talk about uh, shuffle and swing I'm sure most of you if you if you've tackled the blues you've seen uh, the word shuffle or swing now I sometimes get I'm told sometimes that my videos are a bit too uh, advanced, so this is very simple, but it still will be beneficial to all of you because it's a very, very com uh, common thing. You'll see um, the word swing or shuffle almost interchangeably, although I do think there's a slight difference between them. The basic idea is that instead of you using um, uh, eight notes, sorry, like this, with a, with a timing like one, two, so I'm playing two notes per beat, and I'm playing them square, so I'm playing one on the number, one, one on the beat, and then one on the end, which is the half beat, okay? So I go one, and two, and three, and I go straight. Okay, so this isn't, usually it works. Uh, depending on the style of music though, especially blues and jazz, and most music derived from them, this sounds a lot, uh, you know, a little stiff. What you want is something more natural. So the way to decode this, this probably started out as some, you know, somebody played it by ear. But the way it was decoded musically was to instead of playing a square uh, group of two notes, we we kind of play it as if it were a triplet. So instead of playing one and two and, we would play one and two and. The number of notes is the same, but if, imagine counting a triplet. It will be one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, like that, okay, three notes per beat. You would take the first two notes of the triplet and combine them, and then leave the other one out. So the second note will, be, will last, of course, shorter than a half note. If you play, I'm sorry, than an than a eight note. If you play two eight notes, it will be two notes per beat. And if you play triplets, this will last a bit longer. One, two, three, one, two, three. Hear it? Straight. One and two and three and four. With the um, shuffle. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. You hear that? So that's the sound. Now let's play something with a metronome to it and from close up. It will be a very simple lick and uh, see what it sounds like. So as you can see, there's a big difference. The musically, it sounds a lot more natural than the second one, uh, especially in the blues and jazz. 
Uh, now let's uh, talk about the difference between shuffle and swing. Usually they're ch they're used interchangeably, so you see you see even in tablature and um, notation you'll see them interchangeably. I feel that a shuffle is actually um, a set way of playing. So you you see a triplet and you play the first two notes together and the third as a second note. Okay, that's set. You can actually change the duration of a triplet. The triplet is what it is. It's three notes in a beat. Now, if we if we talk about uh, swing, I think there are different degrees of swing. You can swing more or less. Okay, so the basic idea is the same, but you can swing maybe a bit more relaxed. All right, so at the end, I'm almost playing straight eight notes, but I'm, I'm you know I'm delaying just a little bit the second one. Okay, so if I play the same lick in three different ways. I can play straight, I can play with a straight shuffle, so it's a triplet but it's set, and then I could play with a, with a swing, which is based on the mood of the player or what the song requires, then it can have more or less uh, of the shuffle feel. Okay, so let me give you a close-up of three different options for the same very simple lick, okay, so that all levels can play this. Okay, and this is it. So uh, try with uh, with your own licks. Write very simple phrases at first, and then go uh, beyond with uh, you know more complicated stuff. And I will see you next week with probably a video on palm muting. Okay, uh, see you next week. Bye bye.